Hello, my name is Colleen Magnus and welcome to Creating with Colleen. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator on the east coast of Virginia. So I hope you're doing well today. I come to you live every Wednesday, God willing, um, at noontime. And this way I can share some creativity with you as you grab your lunch. And you can relax and just take a little bit of stress out of your busy day. So today I'm going to show you how to make a trifold angle card out of eight and a half by 11. Last week we made it out of 12 by 12 and you can find, you can be able to find both of these videos on YouTube. I have a Creating with Colleen Magnus YouTube channel. Please go there and subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when I make other videos. But last week I showed you how to make the trifold angle card out of 12 by 12 cardstock. And the reason the 12 by 12 cardstock is the easiest because you have to have three equal sections to your card. So this was easy, four inch, four inch, four inch. Don't have to do any math. And this is using the high tide stamp set, which is getting ready to retire. Um, it, last I checked, it was still available. It is a great set with some wonderful sayings in it. And it worked out wonderful with the sea and sand designer paper that is currently in our January through June catalog. So then I got to think and it's like, okay, a lot of people might not have 12 by 12 cardstock. It's great for a lot of projects. And of course it's perfect if you do any type of scrapbooking, but a lot of people do have eight and a half by 11. So I wanted to come to you. This is also a little bit of a sneak peek. You may not have seen all this before, but we have some new in colors here, some new designer papers and a new stamp set. So I'm not gonna do the full reveal on that, but um, it is a little bit of sneak peek for the new catalog that is coming out starting May 4th. So if you are local and you would like to uh, pick up your catalog from my house, you can start doing that as early as next week. You can stop by and wait till you see it. It's a great catalog. But this here, this I wanted to show you how to make out of eight and a half by 11. Now this is using a new stamp set, glad you're sitting down, called Hand Penned Petals. And I have loved this stamp set. Um, I have this all I've been creating with the last week because I have a team event called Better Your Best, cut over 50 cards for that using this set. Um, I also, oh, I shouldn't tell you my stamp clubs. Anyways, they might be using this set maybe next month for their projects, but it's just a really fun, two-step stamp to use. It is a bundle, it comes with dies. And again, I will go more into detail. Today is, it's more about the angle fold than it is a new product. I'm sure you beg to differ, but, so I'm using the hand pen petals. I'm using coordinating designer paper that is called hand penned designer papers and the colors are amazing. And I'm also using a couple of new in colors. So the in colors I'm using, this is called Pale Papaya, Evening Evergreen, which is a beautiful rich green, and then Soft Succulent, which is in here. So that's three of the five. I won't show you, but the other two colors are called Polished Pink and Fresh Freesia. So let's get started because I wanted to show you how to make this card. Now I recently posted this on my Facebook page. I'm gonna change that because I had a measurement wrong here. Again, whenever you're creating a trifold angle card, you need three equal sections. That's what makes it go from zigzag corner to corner. So instead of getting into a bunch of 1 64ths and all these crazy fractions, what you're gonna do is you are gonna take a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, you're gonna cut it at five and a half, so it's the height of a normal card, and you're gonna cut that 11 inches to 10 and seven eighths. So basically, when you're done, you have a sheet of cardstock that is 10 and seven eighths by five and a half. Because then when you score this at three and five eighths and seven and a quarter, you are gonna get the zigzag and the three even sections that you need. Now you can create all of the trifold angle cards you want because I know your stamp room has a ton of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. 
So I'm gonna go through again how I cut everything and then I'm going to um, go ahead and stamp it and show you how to you know, assemble everything. But basically, these are the measurements right here. These are the measurements for the inside pieces. And that's what I wanna show you because it is just like a regular card when you get to talking about it. So for example, let me move this. When you have your angled piece, this is cinnamon cider, which is in this designer paper that I absolutely love. Um, you're just gonna layer this like you would if this was a regular card. You know, everything we do goes in a quarter inch. I shared this card in the other video, and it's true that if this base piece is four and a quarter by five and a half, your next layer is gonna be four by five and a quarter. Next layer, three and three quarters by five. Everything comes in by a quarter inch. And it's no different with this. Even the way you cut your angle, I'm gonna show you, is just a quarter inch smaller. So when you think of this section right here, this section was three and three eighths. And when I measured up here, um, I'm sorry, this section was three and five eighths. And when I measured up here, it was three and five eighths. So this piece here is just a quarter inch smaller, three and three eighths by three and three eighths. So see, if this was an entire piece, all I did was come in a quarter inch smaller. Now, when I cut this, again, what was 10 and seven eighths, five and a half. I measured up right here. And this part, you can make the angle any, any angle you want. But I ended doing it at one and three quarters. So when I did this, I measured up one and three quarters. I cut from there to the top of the second score line. And that's what gave me my angle. So if this was a three and five eighths inch section, just a quarter inch smaller, three and three eighths. So I have this piece here. For this angle, since I cut this at one and three quarters, I'm just gonna measure up one and a half and cut across. So I will take my pencil that I had here just a minute ago. It was a brand new, beautiful number two yellow pencil. Okay, good thing I have one on the desk. Hold on. Not sure where it went, but I'm sure it'll show up. Now watch, it's probably in view here somewhere. So if it is, somebody put a comment up there and let me know. But anyway, so I'm just gonna measure up one and a half. So I have my one and a half inch mark. And I'm just gonna cut to that top corner. So I have my piece here. There's my top corner, my one and a half. And then this is my first section. I have a nice, just, whoops, white gum eraser. Take my little pencil mark off, because that would drive me crazy. And for that, that's my first piece. So you could see how it came in a quarter inch. So for this section, I'm actually gonna stamp it. So I want a piece of Whisper White. So here, Again, it is three and three eighths inch across and then uh, five and a half inches high. So this piece is gonna be three and three eighths by five and a quarter. Again, if you were measuring this in there, just a quarter inch smaller. So to know where to cut up, you would measure this piece here because they're all, they could just be slightly different I think these measurements work for the most part. But again, if I'm doing this, this here looks like it is three and a half, so I would go three and a quarter. Each angle tends to be a little bit different, so let's try that. Hey, Lily, I'm so glad you could join me. Haven't seen you in a while, and it is good to see you. Okay, so actually that's more, let me cut that. It's actually more like three and five eighths. So that would be three and three eighths up, like the measurements say. So again, I make my mark. I hope school is going well for you, Lily. 
and I'm glad you are grabbing lunch with me. Put my pencil mark to this piece here. I cut that. And then there's my centerpiece. So it's really pretty easy once you get going on this. Now on this one here, that's just standard. This is um, the three and five eighths by five and a half. So this is three and three eighths, five and a quarter. Hey, Julie, I'm glad you could join me too. I hope your heads won't be spinning with all the measurements, but it's really, really easy to do this. You just have to think in a quarter inch smaller. So on the actual card, um, those are the three pieces that I just cut, but I need this piece. So again, it's not a problem. Um, it's the same size as if it was a re rectangle. So I would want to cut my piece three and three eighths by five and a quarter. But just remember when you cut that angle, you have to cut it from the right side, depending on your paper, because you go in this way. So here I have, again, I'm on the back side. Lay this on there, it would be like that. So here I would measure up this line, three and five eighths. So I'm gonna measure up three and three eighths. Don't let those one eighths in scare you. Now I just gotta make my pencil mark a little bit darker so I can see that. Bring my cutting back, cutter back. And again, just put that pencil mark there to that angle because I'm going in the opposite direction. And now that I have that, <clears throat> that piece is gonna fit fine right there. So keep in mind, three equal sections, but at the same time, you this can vary. If you want an angle that isn't as drastic, it will just go like here, make that higher. But just whenever you cut your inside angle pieces, they're just a quarter inch smaller than where you started here. So now let's put this together. For the first piece, I'll put on the front. I will just put this one here. And again, I love the papers. I loved Cinnamon Cider. I did the whole, all the designer papers in this pack are gorgeous, but I really wanted to use um, the, the in color and the Cinnamon Cider because I really haven't used Cinnamon Cider that much and it is a beautiful color. That is from the in colors that are carrying over. So you have at least another year to play with that. Hello, Barb. I'm glad you could join us for lunch. You're getting a little bit of a sneak peek here. There's a, it's called Hand Penned Stamp Set. And this is the Hand Penned Designer Paper. So I have those two pieces here. Now for the inside, I'm going to stamp this piece. So I am taking the new Evening Evergreen ink and the word thanks, because you can always use a thank you card. And I'm just gonna stamp that right in the top. And then for the bottom piece, I love out of this little stamp set, I have the Soft Succulent. So I'm just gonna put my little whimsical, oh dear, that's not acceptable. Look at that. I'm stamping like nobody's watching. I can't have that. That's what I get for putting my hand in the ink pad. Okay, so let me do this. Let me try that again. That's the best thing about stamping is that you have two sides to every piece of cardstock. And I am so thankful for that. So there's the one. You can always get two chances. There's not many crafts you get two chances at, but paper crafting is definitely one of them. And then I'm gonna take our other new in color, the Pale Papaya, and I will open this. And I have these really, really cute little flower buds up here. And I'll even stamp it and move it again. So now that I have this, let me close my ink pads. Well, I'll leave that one open, I'll need it. Wipe my hands on my jeans. 
You always want to wear denim or dark jeans when you are stamping so you have a place to wipe your hands. Better on your clothes that you can wash than on your card. So I have that piece there. And then this piece we cut for the middle. And on this piece, one of the um, flowers that I love, and again, they all have dyes, which are wonderful, is this beautiful little bouquet of flowers. So I will take this and I'm gonna stamp it right in the middle. I didn't use a pad under there, so I wanted to push extra hard. And then from here, I am going to go ahead and stamp my color. So I'm using the soft succulent. And what's nice, what I loved about this, um, oh, thank you, Barb. She's so true. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Amen. And there have been a couple projects that I tried and tried. And after a while, I just went to bed and it was all better in the morning. And it worked. So you are absolutely right. But I have the soft succulent. And again, what I really love about um, the stamp set is that they don't fill in completely. So it really, it's gorgeous. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually, I mean, you could use your blends on here because it is line art. There's many different things you could do to color this. You could take a blender pen, but I love the look of it not totally matching because A, it's very forgiving. And uh, B, I might not even have the stamp going in the right direction, but it still works. Gotta love it. So here, make this a little bit lighter. I won't re-ink it. Give it a little bit of depth there. Same with here. And the fact that it's photopolymer works definitely in your favor because you can see exactly where you're putting everything. So there are my leaves. Then I'm gonna come in with the pale papaya. I kind of like saying that too. <laughs> papaya papaya. I think it's Italian, I'm not sure. But I will take this and line it up with my flowers here. I really think I'm gonna need my, well, we're just gonna roll with it. I was gonna say, I think I need my um, pad underneath. And actually, you know what? To keep it from slipping, I always had this pad underneath. Let's just put it on top for a little bit. This is just a foam, fun foam, and it works really good for stamping photopolymer. Then I'm going to put, that was my large flower. So then I have a smaller flower. So I can just rotate this around, see where I like it. I think that's pretty good. I've got that one. And then there is a double flower. Where is my double flower? We've had kind of a crazy week. Here we go. And um, anyways, we're here. We're here. So praise God for that. So next I will just take my other flower that I'm looking for. This one here. That's my large one. That's my medium one. So right here we have large, medium, and small. I'm gonna rotate it around to where it looks how I want it. I think it's just like that. And I'm gonna put that one there. So loving that cinnamon cider. I have to put a couple little flowers in for that. But I do have to stamp off because it was almost too dark. So I just have a little bit of cinnamon cider. I'm gonna stamp off and then I can just line these up. Here's one. And this will bring in the colors from my designer paper too. And my second one. And I was off on that, so I'm just gonna stamp it again. Perfect. Okay, so I have this here, which I will go ahead and mount to the center of my card. Let me put this here. Oh, hey, Lynn. I'm glad you could join us. I'm glad you popped in for lunch. We are doing the um, angle card, eight and a half by 11 um, tri-fold angle card where we did the 12 by 12 last time. So here my card is coming together. Eight and a half by 11 card stock. Everybody has it. So you'll be able to make this card quite easily. And then for my 
flowers on the inside. I already cut these. I told you they come with dyes and they are gorgeous. So I'm just going to take, this really is so much quicker than actually um, coloring or doing blends, but you know, we all love to do that too. But I'm going to put my color in there. So again, that was the pale papaya. I'm going to take this once again with the um, cinnamon cider stamp off. And if you had gone to the Facebook page and recently downloaded the eight and a half, or took a picture of the eight and a half by 11 measurements, I had that wrong. I had it wrong. I had this is three and three eighths. It's three and five eighths. So I'm gonna post a new picture. I just wanted you to go back and make sure that you do have the correct dimensions. Then with this one, again, all of our beautiful leaves. Let me get those. So I have the larger leaf. Let me turn it this way. I'll put that one in there. Let me go this way. I can even, um, well, no, I'll make them all full strength. So I have those there. And then there's a smaller leaf. And what I like to do is take this one and then I kind of turn it around. And it really fills in that little bit of the stem that's holding on to the petals. Now, if you wanted to bring it down, I haven't ordered the markers yet. I don't know what I was thinking, but I can still take a blender pen and just pull this color into my stem. You know, that, you know, it's kind of like when you go to the grocery store, you come home and you're already making the next list. I think that's what it's like when you are doing your stamping. You come home and you're like, oh, I need that now. And you start the next list. And again, I love how it's not all filled in, but if you wanted to kind of fill that leaf in a little bit, don't make it all one color, because I think you need the different colors, but you could just pull a little bit of green in there. Now y'all know I will be in mourning because I have the champagne shimmer paint which I'm not even going to tell you about because I tell you in every single video. It's still available. It is retiring. But while I can, till May 3rd, you can bet I'm still going to be spraying, spritzing, every single thing that I have. And I really did douse that. So let me give that just a minute. But then I'm going to take my card here. And I'm just going to take a couple of dimensionals. I want to put one on that back leaf. One on my flower, one kind of right there. Because you're not going to want to put your dimensionals, of course, up here because of the way that is. So I do believe I can put one here. And then I'm just going to pull these little pieces off, throw them on the floor because I am at home. That's how I measure how productive my day has been, by how much I have to sweep up at the end of the day. It's a good way to mark yourself. So I'm going to put my little flower here. And then we have in this suite, genial gems, genial gems. I'm going to have to probably watch uh, some other things to see that I'm pronouncing it right. But if not, I just will warn you, I have always been a, bit, a butcher of vocabulary. Um, so it's okay. I'm going to put a couple of these little gems on here. Let's see, you always wonder where to put them. Then you always second guess yourself. I'm gonna put one there, because they really are cute and they just add a lot. Hmm, all right, just pick place, Colleen. All right, right there. But then I always go, oh no, that's too symmetrical. Let me move this right there. Kind of one of the things that happens when you're a drafter, you do everything in lines. So that, plain and simple, is how to make the trifold angle card out of eight and a half by 11. I think, I hope it wasn't too confusing because I was throwing a lot of fractions at you. I think if you go watch the high tide trifold angle card video that I have where it was like in fourths, I think the measurements are easier to understand. But again, whatever this section is, you just come in a quarter inch. Same here, whatever this section was, look at it like a rectangle, come in a quarter inch, and whatever this uh, dimension is when you cut it, 
Just take this piece and go a quarter inch in and cut to the top. So again, if you need to take a picture, but I will put it on my Facebook page. These are the measurements if you were doing it with eight and a half by 11. So that's what I have to show you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I really loved making this card. You know, uh, special folds are my absolute favorites to do. And again, whether you do it with 12 by 12, where this is four inches, or whether you do it eight and a half by 11, where this section is three and five eighths. It's a fun card to make. It's a great way to display all your different designer papers. And um, I think it's just, like I said, I think it's a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, you know, you can always contact me. You can um, request my newsletter, creatingwithcolleen.com. There you can also watch the videos. I take my lives and I turn around and put them into YouTube. So again, I found YouTube. Please subscribe to my page and click the bell. And I promise to keep bringing you my creative ideas. And I hope you enjoy them. I hope you all have had a wonderful lunch. Stay tuned for the new products that are coming. I just couldn't help myself. I at least had to get my hands on this for the time being. And again, starting next week, you are more than welcome to come by the house and pick up your catalogs if you're local. And if you're not local and I'm mailing them, they will be in the mail, um, priority mail or first class later this week. I chose to mail a lot of them myself just to make sure that you would be getting them. So God bless you all. Thank you for joining me. I really enjoy seeing your names pop up and I just appreciate your support so much. Bless you all for a great day and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at noontime Eastern time. God bless. Bye-bye.